Okay, so um, with probability, I know some of you may have been exposed to some probability before. We're going to forget everything you know. We're going to start right from the very beginning, and it's really important that you do forget all the techniques you might have learned before, because uh, we need to talk right from the very definition. If we're going to be able to do anything more complicated, we always have to remember this little fact about the definitions here. So let's just see, what's the probability of flipping two heads if you had two coins? Sure, go for it, Andrew. 25%. 25%. You are correct. How did you know that? Uh, make a tree so that's heads. Flipping heads first time is 50%, second time is 25%. I like your suggestion. Um, I'd like to see your tree though. How many branches does your tree have? The one coin has heads and tails. Okay, so let, like this? Heads and tails? Yeah. Okay. And then from one heads is heads and tails again. Ah, okay. I like that. I like that. So there's. Tacos. This is what Andrew is saying we could do. So, do you remember what this was when we ca did counting? <coughs> well, this would be our fundamental counting principle, but what does it show? Remember, I, we did a menu in the cafeteria. All the possibilities. All possibilities, right? So, if I flip two coins, all possibilities are shown here. Another way you might be able to represent this is I could say heads, tails. Um, whoops, sorry, too many heads there. Um, Tails, heads, and tails, tails. So if I look at these, no matter how you choose to represent your, your possible outcomes, okay, how many ways can you flip two heads? One. one. There's only one way. It's either this one or this one, depending on where you, you know, how you see this experiment. So that means there's one out of four possible outcomes. What if we uh, take one card from 52? What's the probability that you get a face card? Uh, 12 out of 52. Yes. So 12 out of 52. What if I said, okay, ignore the fact that you can reduce the fractions. What if I said mm, probability is 3 out of 13? How could you know that without having to reduce the fractions? Three face cards for every suit. So three out of 13, right? Okay, what about if we wanted to draw a red ace? One out of 26. Yeah, so it's two red aces in the deck. So that simplifies to one out of 26, okay? So the key idea here is what we call a sample space, okay? So the sample space is the list of all possible outcomes in an experiment, okay? And it is a really critical idea for us in probability. In fact, that's how we define probability. So for a sample space, this is the set of all possible outcomes. Okay. So once we define what a sample space is, then we can define the probability that an event happens. So the probability that the event A happens, so maybe A is like the probability it will rain in Vancouver. Right, which is like 99.9999999%. Um, what we do is we take the number of occurrences divided by the sample space. Okay. Now with weather, it's a lot more complicated, so don't worry. You won't be, we won't be doing any meteorology stuff here, but uh, definitely stuff like cards and dice and, and other things that we can count a lot easier. Um, so here's some things that we mean with certain probabilities. If you have the probability of an event equal to zero, that means it's impossible. It will not happen. Okay, so how can someone give me, um, let's use the deck of cards. Can someone give me an example of an event that is impossible from a deck of cards? Five aces. Sure. Getting a 14. Getting a 14? Yeah. Okay, so if you counted the values up to 13, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I think I know what you're trying to say. There's no 14th card in a, in a rank. But yeah, five aces, you couldn't get five of a kind from one deck of cards. So the probability would be zero. Okay? Um, pr uh, probability that A equals one, this now means certainty. This will happen. If you have a probability of one, it's guaranteed to happen. Okay? Um, all probabilities must then be between impossibility and certainty. So it must fall between zero and one, inclusive. If your probability turns out to be something like a negative, you gotta check your math. If it turns out to be greater than one, you gotta check your math. 
So would one be like 100% or? One is 100%, but then again, it's no longer a chance. At that point, it is a certainty that it will happen. Okay? Okay. So we can do some pretty complicated questions very simply if we uh, just try something like listing the sample space out. Okay, and uh, for example, we're going to take a look at rolling two dice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add up the sums. Okay, so the sums, for example, 1 and 1 is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, it's going to take me a minute or two to fill this table in. It's not very complicated, but I can list all possibilities of adding up two dice once they're rolled. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll finish this off here. Oops. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit tedious, but once I've listed the entire sample space, there's nothing I won't be able to answer about rolling two dice, because I'll be able to see all possible outcomes for rolling two dice. Okay, so here's all possible outcomes if I roll two dice. We can answer all those questions now. So why don't we start with, uh, we'll try a couple here, and then we'll talk about those games we played at the beginning of class. So how about a pair? What's the probability of rolling a pair? One and six. How did you get one and six? Well, oh, no, wait, never mind. Sorry. well you might be right. I'm just wanting to know how you got it. Well, let's use sample space. I am said today, I want you to throw out whatever techniques you've learned about probabilities. All I want you to do is talk about sample space. So the best way we can talk about this is if you don't simplify your fractions, if you just tell me what do you think the probability is. 6 out of 36. 6 out of 36. Why is that? Because there's 6 pairs and 36 squares. That's right. So if I take a look, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pairs and 36 possible outcomes. So this would be 6 out of 36 or 1 and 6 if we were to cut it down. <laughs> okay, what's the probability that you roll a 7? Same thing. Same thing. Let's take a look. Here's the 7s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 7s. So that means we've got 6 out of 36 or 1 out of 6. So now I know you all probably thought I was being really crafty. The evil math teacher was trying to cheat you out of your, your winnings in the game that we started with. But that was actually a fair game that we played where I said pick a pair or pick a 7. That's why I didn't care which one you chose. <laughs> because I knew the probabilities are the same. We have an equal opportunity to win. So you might not feel like one is going to be uh, easier than the other. You know, you might feel like, oh, it's easier to roll a pair. I'm going to pick a pair. But again, that's the psychology. That's not the math. The math says <clears throat> if we played that game, rolling a pair or rolling a seven, whoever rolls the pair is going to roll just as many sevens. It's not going to, they're going to be the same equal fair game. Okay. Um, how about uh, this time, just to be clear, let's say this is not a sum. But what if I wanted to roll the two dice, and I wanted to see a 5 or a 3 show up on the table? What do you think the uh, probability would be if I want to make sure one of the dice that's facing up is either a 5 or a 3? More than 36. More than 4. 18 out of 36. More than 18. 20. <laughs> well, let's count it, okay? Because this is the whole point of today is to go back to the very basics of probability. So there's all the possible dice that could have rolled a 3. Um, here's all that could have rolled a 5 for that dice. I also have the dice here, which would be 3 and 5. So if I want to be a 3 or a 5... Those are all the black circled ones. Those are all the possible outcomes I could be. So what do you have to be careful of? What do you notice in this when we look at it? The overlap. There's overlap. So it would be wrong for us to say, well, there's 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, and say there's 24. That would be wrong. We actually have to count them and make sure we, they don't overlap. So if I go like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whoops, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are 20 out of 36 that do that. Yeah, but then one die 
the other dining can't be 11. Let's talk about that in a second. Um, the reason that there are, some of the people said 24, you, if you take a look, there's the one, two, three, four duplicates. So 24, subtract the ones you overlapped. 24 minus 4 gets you back to 20 where you should have been. 